Welcome back guys. So in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you step by step on how to make this awesome set of pet steps. And it only took me four boards and a half a sheet of beadboard. And these steps are perfect for anyone that has an aging pet or just a small pet that sleeps in the bed with them. It can go at the end of the bed, it can go on the side of the bed, anywhere that you would like. But this is a super nice and steady build that would accent any type of bedroom. And this would be a perfect build to add to your own home. If you're into making money with woodworking, Hang around to the end and I'll go into deeper detail on how to market these. So I have a ton of stuff to cover, so let's go ahead and jump into this video. All right, so let's get started with this. You can see Dex is in the background, you know, kind of wondering if this is gonna be for him, but it's not. And I'm gonna start by cutting my parts. And since the price of two by fours have came down, that's what I'm gonna be using to make my two by twos. And as always, I will be putting a full cut list into the description or if you are a plans in the hand type of person, head over to my Etsy shop and I'll be posting those plans there. I'll throw a link into the description for the plans. And while you are there, make sure to check out our Patreon community. It's still growing like crazy and I'm posting a lot of behind the scenes content and it's just a cool place to hang out and ask questions. Okay, so back to the video. So all that I've done so far is ripped everything down into one and a half by one and a half material. And although this material will not be seen, it's gonna be covered, I still like to rip off the edges, making this square it just makes joinery much easier. Now with my boards cut down to two by twos, I'm just going off of my part list and cutting everything down to size. And throughout this build, I will be referring to certain parts by letters. These will all correspond with the cut list that I will put in the description. And I really don't know what's going on here. I'm having issues, it looks like, but um, anyway. So once you have all of your parts cut, it's time to start assembling our wall frames. And we'll have two identical wall frames for this build. So if you're following along with the cut list, it's going to be parts A through G. And I'm just laying these frames out for now, just making sure that everything is going to fit the way that I would like. And with everything laid out, let me go ahead and show you what those different letters correspond with. I figured this may make it a bit easier on explaining how to assemble this. So with our side frames just roughly laid out, I'm going to go ahead and mark the directions that I want my pocket holes to go. That way I can go ahead and cut all of my pocket holes at one time. And for this, I'm gonna use Craig's foreman. Yeah, you can use any of Craig's pocket hole jigs for this, but the foreman actually makes it a lot quicker. So up until this point, I've cut all of my pocket holes to join one and a half inch material to one and a half inch material. But part G is small, so we're gonna set this up just a bit different. As you can see, if I was to cut the pocket hole here, it would actually go through the bottom. And you would make this adjustment on any jig that you're using. Just go ahead and drop your drill guide down to cut three quarter inch material. Or if you're using the 720, just put a three quarter inch block underneath of this and it'll lower the pocket hole. Just remember this whenever you go to put the screws in. And now let's put our frame parts back together. And because I forgot to reorder screws whenever I ran out of the two and a half inch steel, I'm gonna have to use two and a half inch blue coat. And for that part G, we're gonna be using an inch and a quarter screw. I forgot to mention earlier, but whenever I was making my pocket hose, I actually put one on each side of the board, just for extra stability. So after both frame sides are assembled, let's go ahead and install our connecting board's eye. And there will be eight of these parts with pocket hose on each end. And again, you do not have to have these blue coat screws, it's just I didn't have the typical steel. The blue coats are made for exterior projects. No. Actually, it doesn't matter, it's wood, but I just wanted to see if I could throw in my own little sound effect there. Okay, so with our connecting boards attached to one frame, let's just set that right on top of our second frame and attach it. Just a tip, whenever you get to the inside screws, go ahead and switch over to the shorter bit that comes with your Craig jig. It makes it a lot easier. And now it's starting to look like stairs, just little stairs. And keep in mind, if you needed to change the dimensions of this, let's say you have a bigger or smaller animal or bed, then you do it right here with the frame. And also keep in mind, this is very important. If you've made it this far into the video, obviously I'm doing something halfway right, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Okay, so now let's go ahead and install our door boards H. So this is gonna be the opening for your little critter to crawl in and out of. And what I'm showing you here with all my hand gestures is you can make it as wide or as slim as you would like, depending on the size of your animal. 
Or let's say if you wanted to put a litter box for a cat or something in here, you wouldn't have to put the sides on at all, just the top. Okay, so now it's time to attach our fasteners. There's a couple different ways that you can do this, but I really like these figure eight fasteners. They're cheap and they work well. And that's all that you have to do to install these is cut a countersink the thickness of the fastener, so maybe 3 sixteenths, and then just screw them in with the screws that came with them. By doing it this way, whenever you are ready to attach your treads and your top, you can just screw it in from underneath. Piece of pie, not pumpkin pie. So with our fasteners in place, let's go ahead and install our sides. So I decided to use a sheet of beadboard for this, and this is only a four by four sheet. So a full size sheet, you can actually get two of these out of. So if you're using beadboard, turn it upside down and trace out one of your frame sides. And then to make this easier, I'm going to pre-drill some holes. That way my jigsaw blade can fit in at all corners. And then let's just cut this baby out. And I know what you're probably thinking, why did you drill the holes? You could just do like a plunge cut and actually just be able to take the same shape and put it on the other side of this, but it won't work out that way, trust me. I tried it. So remember, the beadboard runs in a specific direction. So keep that in mind when you're setting up for your second cut. And for this one, go ahead and trace out the pet door opening. Okay, so you get the point. So we're gonna cut this out and then we're ready to install it onto our frame. So I'm just adding wood glue to any of the parts that will be touching the outer wall. And then I'm just gonna tack this down with some inch and quarter bread nails. And of course, put as many of the bread nails around the edges where the trim will be covering it. It'll make for a much cleaner looking product. And so after repeating this process on the opposite side, this is where you're at. It's coming together. Now let's put the back on. This part will be labeled L in the description. And I'll be attaching this the same way as I did the sides. And once we have the back on, let's go ahead and move forward to our risers. And they're gonna be labeled M and N. And the only reason why there's two different riser sizes is the very first step is not as tall as the rest. So. It's gonna be a bit shorter. Just an FYI, the risers and the backboard were all cut from that same four x four sheet that the sides were cut from. And now that we have it pretty much all cased in, this is what it looks like. And at this point, is when you really need to paint or stain or do whatever that you're gonna to do to this base. I guess you don't have to, but it'll save you a lot of trouble and a lot of painter's tape. So while we have the paint out, let's go ahead and cut our trim. So for the trim, I decided to keep it simple and just use the same two by four material that I use for the frame. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut mine at a quarter of an inch thick. Now you can do an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch, but since these boards are gonna be so narrow, make sure to run it through your table saw where your keeper board is on the outside. And then just move it in a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch every time you make your cut. Now for the landing board and treads, I use reclaimed material. But I know not everyone has access to this, so for the plan and in the description, I have it laid out to be used from a one by eight board that you can just buy from the store. And for the landing, you can either glue these up and clamp them or just attach them with pocket hose. So with our landing and tread stained and polyurethane or however you would like to do it and our trim all painted the color that you would like, it's time to start putting this stuff on. So let's start with the landing. We're just gonna turn it upside down and then set our frame right on top upside down and just attach those figure eights. And while it is upside down, let's go ahead and attach our treads. Just make sure that your spacing is even on both sides for the landing and the treads. And now for the trim. So I'm not gonna give you exact lengths and measurements for this trim. And the reason why is if you're off by 16th of an inch in really any direction, the lengths that I give you will not be correct. So. It's always better to trim out your project once you're done and by measuring everything out. There are specific measurements in the plans for the trim, but still I would wait until the end to make these cuts and make sure that they are customized. And the trim is something that, you know, you can change up if you would like. If you would like a more ornate trim, then go buy it. But trim is very expensive. So this was my solution to what could be your biggest expense for this project. And I think it turned out pretty nice. And there it is, guys. A beautiful set of dog stairs made out of three two by fours, a one by eight, and a four by four piece of beadboard. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. And regardless of whether you're building this for your own home or to make money with woodworking, it's a pretty easy build. And for those of you that are in this to make money for woodworking, 
This is a build that you want to do. Remember what I've taught in the past. People will spend money on their kids, grandkids, pets. Those are the things that you need to focus on. And this is where the pets come in, especially a pet that is an aging pet that needs help, you know, getting up onto the bed or wherever. And this build is a high profit build, and that's key. So the material that I use for this, three two by fours, which right now in my area, the $3.75 a piece. Then I use the one by eight, which is $10.99, so 11 bucks. Then I also use just a half of a sheet of beadboard. You can buy it in a half of a sheet or you can buy a four by eight sheet. Regardless, it comes out to about the same at about $15 per unit. So to all together for this build, it was only around $30. So what I did before this video, just to test the market, is I made a post on Facebook. What would you pay for something like this? And I actually put pictures of this one. And out of all of the responses that I received, the average was right around $300. Most people said $300 or more because whenever you look up pet steps to buy, they're cheap, they're plastic, you know, and they're ugly. This is what people will want in their home or in their bedroom. So if it were me and people were saying that they would pay $300 or more, let's start with the and more and see what happens. So I would price these out at about $350 a piece, and I don't think that you'll have any trouble selling them. But again, you need to focus on certain things like handmade, local made if you're selling them local. They are heavy and they would be hard to ship. Point out the fact that it has a place for a bed. Stage it up. Just like I've taught in my previous videos, that is key. If it's an ugly picture or if it's just a picture of it in your shop, you're not going to sell it. Or if you do, you're not going to sell very many. But if you actually have this staged up at the end of a bed, people can visualize it in their own home, they'll buy it. But point out its features, the solid wood treads and the solid wood top, as well as the cubby. that They could put a litter box in or just an area for their pet to go and chill. So hone in on all of those different types of things with your marketing. Because right now, people are used to getting cheap junk. So they're wanting handcrafted items that will actually look good in their home and not be an eyesore. And... This looks good. It'd be up to you and whether you wanted to sell them painted or not. But if you go with a neutral color like this gray, grays are in with some type of a white trim like this. I don't think that you have any issues selling them with this color. And if they don't like this color, they can repaint it. That's what I would do, but that's just me. Thank you guys again so much for watching this video. I hope that you were able to take something away from it and actually come up with an idea to build upon this. What else could you do to this to make it better, to make it more marketable? Let's say if these were drawers in the front for storage or let's say that this folded up somehow. So always keep your mind open to new ideas and keep pushing the envelope and keep creating different things. So until next time, guys, this is your homework. I want you to think of something in the categories that we discussed that people will spend money on, kids, grandkids, pets. Think of something in that category that you could make and sell. Since we did pets, let's stick with pets. What else could you make for a pet that people would buy? You've got this, so just think about it. And whenever you come up with your idea, Make it happen. Till next time, guys. See ya.